All right. Hi. How are you guys doing? Um, today I'm here to talk to you about the basics of ecology. So we're going to look at what makes up an ecosystem and how energy flows in that system. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing you should probably know is what's the definition of ecology, right? Well, if you're an ecologist, what you're doing is you're studying organisms and you're looking at how they interact with one another. And then you're also looking at how it interacts with its non-living environment. Now, ecologists, when they are studying, they can study at different levels. And we call this these levels um, ecological hierarchy. So if you look, the very smallest is just studying at an organism level. But then you can go all the way to the top. Technically, if you wanted to study the biosphere, you could. The biosphere is Earth, and it's quite large. So you can see why some ecologists don't like studying at that level, because it is, it's just too big. All right, so the first level of hierarchy in ecology is the organism. And the organism is pretty much a single living thing. You put them together. Sometimes we call them species um, if they're able to mate and produce viable offspring. You put a whole bunch of organisms that are the same together and you make what's called a population. So a population is a group of organisms that are of the same species that are living in the same area. Next up, you have what's called a community. And a community is a group of populations that are living together in an area. So if you take a look at this picture here, you can see there's lots of different species of fish. So you've got yellow tangs and Picasso tangs and it uh, looks like different species of coral. And they're all in the same area, but they're all interacting with one another. So we call this a community. Taking a look at a picture here, so this is more of a terrestrial community. So you can see there's different species of plants. And they're all growing in the same area. So this would be a terrestrial community. When you put a whole bunch of communities together, you get what's called an ecosystem. And ecosystems can be quite large. Um, there's, there tends to be many different living organisms interacting together, and then there tends to be a lot of non-living um, components that are also involved in the ecosystem. Those living components that are in an ecosystem, we call them biotic, and the non-living components in an ecosystem, we call abiotic, not living. So if you take a look here at this tape here, the tape here is obviously living, so that would be called a biotic factor. But then you look at something like the soil, obviously excluding the worms and the bacteria and things that are living in the soil. But if you're just looking at the dirt, then that would be considered an abiotic factor because it's not living. So we're going to go through a couple of examples here so you can master those definitions. So we have the ocean here, just the water. That would be an abiotic factor. You have the mola mola or the sunfish as it's known, and this is a living fish. So this would be classified as a biotic factor. Um, rocks, right? Rocks found in our community, definitely abiotic. They are not living. And then lastly, let's not forget the worms. Worms here are living, and so they would be classified as biotic. All right, when you put a whole bunch of ecosystems together, you get what's called a biome in our ecological hierarchy. A biome, again, is a very quite large of area um, where you see lots of ecosystems interacting. Uh, you probably learned or heard of them before, like the desert, tropical rainforest, grasslands, etc. And so pretty much if you go to like um, a grassland all around the world, you're going to find very similar characteristics of the living and non-living components in those areas. When you put a whole bunch of biomes together, you get what's called the biosphere, also known as the earth. You break biosphere down, bio means life, sphere, obviously, circle, round. So a circle of life <laughs> is what we call the earth. Now let's take a look at how energy flows through a system. It's very important to recognize that energy 
it doesn't cycle in a system. Uh, and you're gonna see as it moves through the food webs and food chains that the energy efficiency does lessen. Okay, so ultimately all the energy here on earth starts from the sun, right? If we didn't have the sun, we wouldn't have the energy here on earth that makes life occur. Um, the very important process that can take that sunlight and convert it into a chemical, glucose, is called photosynthesis. And the organisms that can perform that tend to be the plants or the phytoplankton. And we classify those organisms as autotrophs because they have the ability, I say, to make their own food, but they're not really like, you know, in the kitchen making their own food. They are taking sunlight and converting it into a chemical source so that they can use it later to make ATP. All right, and if you want to track where the energy flows in a system, you use what's called a food chain. And so a food chain is a diagram and it shows all the different levels that are in the system. Each level is called a trophic level. And so the organisms can be classified at different trophic levels depending upon what they eat. The very bottom of a food chain, these are our primary producers. These are the organisms that are taking sunlight and converting it into a chemical energy called glucose. So plants and phytoplankton would definitely be in that category. Here is a picture of phytoplankton because a lot of my students are always like, what does that look like? Um, it's very, it's microscopic. They're floating around in waterways um, in the ocean near here. And uh, what they're doing is taking sunlight and converting it into a sugar. Now, any organism that eats a primary producer is called a primary consumer. So here you can see these deer, they are grazing, they are eating the vegetation on the ground, so they would be classified as a primary consumer. Uh, anything that eats a primary consumer is called a secondary consumer. So if this wolf were to come along and eat the deer, it would be classified as a secondary consumer. Uh, keep in mind, depending upon what you eat, that will determine what trophic level you're at. So for example, if I were to go eat a salad, okay, I would be classified as primary consumer because I'm eating you know, lettuce from the ground. However, if I were to go eat, mm, let's say hamburger, um, that cow, was a primary consumer, so that would make me a secondary consumer. So again, the levels can change, it just depends upon what you eat. Okay, anything that eats a secondary consumer is called a tertiary consumer. And so here you see a great white, it's eating a seal, that seal probably ate a smaller fish, that smaller fish probably ate some sort of phytoplankton, so it would be classified as a tertiary consumer. All right, and let's not forget about our decomposers. Now, decomposers, they pretty much can eat any dead material, uh, whether it be at the primary producer level or the tertiary level, it doesn't matter. Um, and that's how they get their energy sources. Um, however, they're very important because they do cycle nutrients back into the soil. So remember, energy flows, but nutrients cycle. And that's, it's really key that you, you know that. Um, the most common decomposers or detritivores, as they're called in a system, are the fungi and bacteria. So mushrooms and all the different species of mushrooms, they eat dead organic material and they cycle nutrients back into the soil. All right, so the last little bit of information that you need to know is called the rule of 10. And the rule of 10 focuses on energy efficiency. And it pretty much says that an organism, when it consumes something, it will only efficiently use about 10% of that energy. The other 90% is lost or wasted as heat energy. So it's simply converted into a form that can't really be used. Um, this is a model, so it's not always 100% accurate, um, meaning some organisms are more efficient at harnessing energy than others. So it's a general rule, 
and that's why it's called the rule of 10. This rule of 10 explains why when you look at food chains and food webs, you'll notice they rarely go above five trophic levels. Usually there's about three to four in the system. And that's because as you get to the top of the food chain, there's less efficient energy available for the predators. So one of the ways they compensate for this is predators have to eat a lot more. And you'll also notice there's not as many predators in systems if you look at their numbers because there just isn't as much energy available to them. All right, well that concludes ecology basics and energy flow and I hope this was extremely helpful and I will see you guys soon.